you've referred to this as a post-factual election where facts don't matter. Um, and you, you were just taking issue with something that Donald Trump said. Uh, and there were other things, the, the so-called fake news disinformation out there, uh, stories. There was a crazy story towards the end of the campaign in which the NYPD was supposedly about to throw Hillary Clinton and her whole gang in jail because of stuff found on Anthony Weiner's computer that linked everybody to child sex trafficking. Just a bizarre story that, interestingly enough, General Flynn retweeted uh, at one point. Um, How much of a problem was this post-factual election in your view? I think it was a huge problem. And I think, look, Jake, I think there's a lot of things we need to examine coming out of this. You just named one of them. Congress has got to investigate what happened with Russia here. We cannot have foreign uh, and foreign aggressors, I would argue, intervening uh, in our elections. And we know that the Russians were promulgating fake news through Facebook and other outlets. But look, we also had, and, and this is with all due respect you know, to Kellyanne and to her colleagues, this isn't personal, but uh, you know, Steve Bannon ran Breitbart News, which was notorious for peddling stories like this. And I'm not attacking him personally, but they they peddled a lot of stories on that website uh, that are just false. They're just not true, and that that reinforce uh, sexist, racist, anti-Semitic. Uh, notions in people, you know, headlines uh, that that just make your that that you know are, are shocking and insulting and and sh- and shouldn't be part of our public discourse. Oh, yeah. I think the biggest piece of fake news in this election was that Donald Trump couldn't win. So there's that, and that was uh, peddled probably for weeks and months before the campaign, definitely in the closing days. If you look at major newspapers and major cable stations networks. Jake, it's I, unmistakable. I never said that he couldn't win. I said I it was a competitive race. Well, there's a motion. I didn't say you didn't. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying, but particularly print stories. I mean, we have colleagues whom we all respect, some of whom are in this room, that represent outlets. Literally, if you go back, because we have them, and you pull the whole front page. Uh, there's it, a lot of Dewey defeats it's Trumans unbelievable. out there. Absolutely. But that's, that's fake, because it's based on things that just aren't true. They have no path. They have no ground game. She's got more money. She has more personnel. She can't possibly lose. And then, of course, the growing narratives, which I'm not going to, the persistent chronic narratives, which I'm not going to repeat here, but they essentially boil down to Donald Trump takes the wings off of butterflies. And, and that, you know, America said, there's a difference between what may offend me and what absolutely affects me. And I, as a voter, I'm going to go that way. And I'm going to vote according to what absolutely affects me.